Hello and welcome to a video from the science break about elements, how we write down symbols for elements and compounds. So here are some elements off our periodic table. There's lithium, there's carbon, there's nitrogen, and you can see that the names are given, but also a symbol in the form of a letter is given as well. So we're going to look to see how we write elements when we write them as symbols. First thing is that we always use either one or two letters in the symbol for elements. So we use one or two letters. And we're going to look at a few examples and then decide and work out how they work when they're put into compounds. So when we're talking about writing elements as symbols, there's two ways of doing it, depending on the element. We're either going to have one uppercase or one uppercase and one lowercase letter. So if we're looking at some examples of just one uppercase letter, some examples are oxygen, which is uppercase O. We've got nitrogen with an uppercase N, and we've got hydrogen with an uppercase or capital H. Some of them have one upper and one lowercase letter, and an example of that is sodium, not the most logical letters there, but N, capital N and a A, small a is sodium. We also have the example of helium, which is uppercase H and lowercase e. Uppercase H is saved for hydrogen, so we can't use an uppercase H for helium. And we have a final example there of calcium, uppercase C and lowercase a. Remember, we never have two uppercase letters. Elements are never shown as two uppercase letters, either an uppercase or an uppercase and a lowercase. In terms of compounds, now how do we show compounds with elements in them? Remember, compounds are two or more elements uh, joined together by strong bonds. However, how do we write them in symbols? Well, let's take a look at an example. First one we have is two or more elements joined to form carbon monoxide. This is carbon monoxide. You can see a capital C and a capital O. We've got calcium oxide there as shown by C with a lowercase a and an O. We've got another example of calcium chloride. And one final example, slightly more tricky than the other ones, but this is something called sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. Now you may notice some of these uh, smaller numbers that are involved in when we write compounds. So let's take a closer look as to why those smaller numbers are there. So let's take the example of calcium chloride as our first example. The first thing we can tell from the formula of calcium chloride is that it has two elements in it. It has calcium and it has chlorine. One atom of calcium. And if we look next to the chlorine, there's a little number two there. So that little number two applies to the chlorine. So we call that um, two atoms of chlorine, two atoms of chlorine. And remember, chlorine, the word chlorine becomes chloride when it's in a compound. That's why it says calcium chloride in the compound. And if we were to draw out the structure of calcium chloride, we could see that for every one calcium atom, there are two chlorine atoms. And that's the structure of calcium chloride. And that's why we write it as a CaCl2. This is a compound called methane, CH4. And again, quite a lot of information we can tell from this. We have two elements present, carbon and hydrogen. And we have one atom of carbon. And you can see there that the four links to the hydrogen. So that means we have four atoms of hydrogen. And again, if we were to look at the structure of methane, we would see that there is one carbon atom for every four hydrogen atoms. There's our carbon atom and there are four hydrogen atoms attached to the carbon. That's the structure of methane, and that's why we have the formula of CH4. We can do some practice on working out number of elements and atoms. And the first one we got here is a compound called calcium chloride. We've done this one already. There are two elements present, calcium and chlorine, one atom of calcium, two atoms of chlorine. So why don't you have a pause here and have a go at the last three and see what you come up with. 
So for carbon dioxide, this is a compound. It has two elements, carbon and oxygen, and it has one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen. We don't need to put a little one next to the C. That automatically means one. Chlorine is an element because it's only made of one type of atom. So there is one element, which is chlorine. And if we look at the number of atoms, there are two atoms of chlorine in the substance called chlorine, the element. The last one is slightly trickier. We can tell straight away that it's a compound because there's more than one element present. So that's a compound. We have three elements present, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. And in terms of the number of atoms, we've got two hydrogen atoms, one sulfur atom, and four oxygen atoms. So this screen shows us how we can look at a formula of a compound, work out the number of elements and the number of atoms of each of the elements that are present in that compound. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.